In this episode, we're going to take another in-depth look at compression, this time specifically threshold and ratio. Now, if you haven't already watched our previous videos on compression, you'll want to do that first. We're making some assumptions that you understand a lot of the things we talked about there, also in our loudness normalization. Check out this playlist here if you haven't seen those, and you probably want to do those first, put this one in your watch list and come back to it later. What I'm finding in short, it seems like, and again, I'm no expert on this, I'm still just learning, but it seems like it's better to use a more extreme threshold and a less extreme ratio. Let's take a look. Let's take another look at doing compression for making your video loud enough, the audio for your video loud enough, and there have been a couple of things that have sort of tripped me up a little bit over time as I've worked on this, and I want to talk about compression just a little bit more, and specifically threshold settings and ratio settings. And let me just show you one of the struggles I've had. Now, first of all, we're in Adobe Audition here. We have a, it's actually a dual mono, you can call it stereo, dialogue track here. And again, we're, we're focusing primarily on dialogue here. What I do here is if I just scan this here, we show that I'm at minus 24 LUFS and our target is going to be minus 16 LUFS. That's the target or recommendation for web distributed audio. So that's all fine and good. The other thing you need to be concerned about is that before you do your compression, before you export your final video, you also need your true peak amplitude to be minus 1.5 dB true peak or lower. And the reason you want minus 1.5 is that once you do the export, there's some compression of the audio, not, not uh, <laughs> in terms of making it smaller file size, and that actually needs a little bit more headroom. So you need to get this at minus 1.5 dB true peak. So what I typically did is I had a file like this. You can see we're at minus 24. What that means is we need to get to minus 16. We need to add 8 dB or loudness units. But if I do that, I can just add 8 dB right here. What happens, of course, is we clip. And this is, again, a recording this straight out of the mic. This is what it sounds like on the clips. Necessarily a deal break. Ooh, you hear that kind of buzzing noise? Very clear. That is and again there, <laughs> provides very clean, and again there. So we can't just do that. And in fact, if we scan this here, while we did get to minus 16 LUFS, our true peak amplitude is actually 3.29. So we actually exceeded zero, and that's why we're getting that clipping. So let's undo that. Of course, what that means is that, is that we need to do some audio compression here. We need to get these peaks and bring them down a little bit. So let's go ahead and go in here, and let's get our single band compressor. Now, the way I've sort of been doing this up until now is that I would look at this and I would know, okay, let's scan here. So we're at minus 24 right now. I need to add 8 dB to get us to minus 16. And at the same time, I also need uh, 1.5 dB true peak of headroom. So that means in total, I need my peaks to be no higher than minus 9.5. So if I just bring my little compressor window out here and kind of say, okay, if I set my threshold to minus 11 right there, and I just compress whatever falls above that, then that should get me where I need to go. So I always wanted to keep my ratio pretty reasonable so that <laughs> things sounded somewhat natural. So let's try this. I've got minus 11 as my threshold. That's this line right here. And anything above that is going to get compressed by a 6 to 1 ratio. That means anything that's 6 dB above that is going to get squished down to 1 dB. So that's a pretty, for dialogue, that's a pretty extreme compression ratio. We'll go ahead and leave our attack at 1 millisecond, release at 150 milliseconds. We're not going to kind of cover a lot of that in this one. Click Apply. Uh, now let's go ahead and get it back up to minus 24. The way we do that is we just use this loudness or sorry, match volume, minus 24 LUFS, run that. Then scan to see where we're at. We are at minus 24 LUFS, that's good. And we needed minus 9.5 dB true peak, but we only have minus 8.6. So <laughs> even with that extreme compression, we didn't get to where we needed to be. So let's undo that and try that again. We'll get a little more aggressive this time, single band compressor, keep the ratio to minus 11. Let's go to an eight to one compression ratio and see what that does for us. Okay, we're gonna match our volume, scan to see where we're at. We're at minus 24 LUFS, that's good for now. Ah, our DB true peak is still only minus 8.81, and again, we need minus 9.5, so undo. 
you can see this is uh, there's an iterative process here. It takes a few tries to zero in. Let's go a little bit more extreme. Let's just say 12 to one ratio. Click apply. Again, we're gonna get back to minus 24 LUFS. Ah, we're still not there. It's a minus nine dB true peak, though we're getting closer. Undo. I think you get the point here. This could be a long process and it was kind of frustrating because it felt like you kind of over compress things. Let me show you an alternative that I found lately and that is to use a more extreme threshold but a less extreme ratio. Let me show you what I mean here. Just to make sure, let's make sure we're at minus 24 LUFS. That's where we want to start. Okay, come up here to our compressor. This time, let's go pretty extreme. Let's go minus, 20, minus 25 on our threshold. So we're going to affect everything that falls above the top of this window right here. All this is going to get compressed, but we're only going to compress it by two to one. Let's see what happens. Apply that. We're going to get it back up to minus 24 LUFS. So we're at minus 24 LUFS and we have a true peak amplitude of minus 9.13. So we're actually pretty close. Undo that. Let's come back in and compress again. We'll just make a little tweak here. This time let's do maybe 2.2 to 1. Leave the threshold at minus 25, leave the attack and release where they are, apply. Get back up to minus 24 LUFS, which is where we're at. And now we have a true peak amplitude of minus 9.59. That's where we need to be. So now I can add 8 dB here. Scan the selection again. You can see we're now at minus 16 LUFS. That was our target. That's where we want to be for web distribution. And our true peak amplitude is minus 1.59. So that's exactly where we want to be. And that's what it looks like. And this is what it sounds like. It comes with a 3.5 millimeter plug. So it really is kind of made for those kind of purposes. But you can also get a Rode VXLR. And it sounds reasonably natural. It does a nice job that way. So kind of a lesson learned for me. You can use a more extreme threshold, a less extreme ratio, and get pretty good results. And it seems like it's easier and quicker to get to where you need to be and it sounds a little bit more transparent. So if you have any other insights or thoughts or questions on this technique, go ahead and leave those in the comments down below. Thanks again for checking out this episode. If you're not subscribed, make sure you do that. And we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon.